Hey, what's going on everyone? So the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra has already been out for over six months and I'll cut right to the chase. It'll be extremely difficult for anyone to outdo this device as the phone of the year for 2023. Now it's not perfect and what may be the consensus best device overall for the year might not be the best device for you subjectively. Let's start with what is objective. This Quad HD display panel is the best in the game. And at 1750 nits of peak brightness, I've never had a single issue outdoors. Though granted, when I've been outside using this display, I've typically found some shade first. You can't always do that in the car though, and that's usually where I need that increased legibility. And the Ultra delivers. It's just so clear, so crisp, so punchy. In all, it's unmatched, which you've come to expect from Samsung. The base 256 gigabyte storage best competitors like the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, which start with just 128 gigabytes of storage. And if you pre-ordered, you got a free storage upgrade to the 512 gigabyte model like I have here, which also means 12 gigabytes of RAM instead of eight. Not that I think eight versus 12 will make a difference unless you constantly have a bunch of heavy apps or games open in the background and are frequently switching between them all. Even then, you'll probably be okay with 8. Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 adorns the front and back, making for a sturdy build along with Samsung's Armor aluminum frame. I can tell you that while I haven't dropped the S23 Ultra much, thank goodness, I did somehow drop it the moment I unboxed it. I had the box in my hand after cutting open the seals and the phone slipped out. You talk about first world problems, first world devastation. It ruined my week, but the only damage was a little tiny nick to the top corner of the metal chassis. It's worth mentioning that I did drop my S23 Plus, which is made of the same materials, more than a few times, and it somehow doesn't have a single nick or scratch, though the hardest material that was dropped on was wood from about waist high. The stereo speakers have been loud and balanced. You'd really have to be nitpicking to find a phone that does better, and even then it would be subjective. The range on this Wi-Fi 6 enabled modem has been really good as well. I can leave my condo and walk a good 30 feet down the hall and still have a good enough connection to navigate the web. Absolutely no issues with call quality as well, and that includes speakerphone quality, which is what I use for most calls. Don't worry, I don't do that in public. While the design language of the Note slash Ultra series now, which these days reminds me of the Nokia Lumia series, if you remember Windows Phone, really makes it stand out. I do kind of prefer the more rounded edges and symmetrical bezels of something like the S23 Plus. Otherwise, the design is pretty immaculate. The glossy metal chassis just adds to the premium feel, and I hope Samsung never changes that. Although if you do prefer a more matted metal chassis, one or two of those custom color options on Samsung's website may be for you. Speaking of, I haven't really liked the color options on the S series the past few years. Certainly nothing surpasses the S10 in that regard, in my opinion. But those unexciting options are salvaged a bit by this gorgeous sky blue you can special order from the Samsung website. As for the regular color lineup, I will say that I like how this botanic green leans more graphite in most lighting. Use with Samsung accessories like the Galaxy Buds Pro and various Galaxy watches has been a pleasure as well. And reverse wireless charging, which Samsung calls PowerShare, is just so clutch. The Samsung ecosystem has really hit its stride and I've been taking full advantage of features like quick share between Samsung devices. So cameras, oh the cameras. Listen, you can't go wrong with any flagship smartphone offering from Samsung, Google, or Apple these days when it comes to photography. So I can't really see how 99% of people wouldn't be happy with what they get from any of those. But the added benefit you get from that 10 times optical zoom and 100 times digital zoom, what Samsung calls space zoom, is just unmatched. At least here in the US, where we don't get the latest offerings from Huawei or Xiaomi, for instance, unless we import them. The main shooter is awesome in just about every situation, including nighttime. Even with night mode off, I can see more from this photo than I could with the naked eye. With night mode on, I can see details in the tree, 
and suddenly I see a basketball court down there. All the other modes are just as good and video is absolutely on point, stabilization included. Now I haven't tried 8K video recording, which this phone can do at up to 30 frames per second, as I wouldn't even know where to actually play it back in 8K, but check out this 4K sample. 4K video, this is 30 frames per second, although the final edit on my video will be 24 frames per second. Sound picked up nicely here, good stabilization. I'm walking now. You can tell me how the stabilization is. And now I'm running. Pretty good stabilization even running, huh? Let me know what you think in the comments. The 10 times optical zoom and 100 times space zoom aren't just party tricks either. They can serve practical purposes. Take this situation for instance. No way I'm reading what bus number that is from where I'm standing, but using the 10 times optical zoom, I can see the bus number and I know if it's the one I need to catch. Using 100 times space zoom, I not only get cool moon shots, but I can read signs from really far away. I can't even tell that there's a sign from here, but when I hit 10 times optical zoom, I can tell the sign exists. And then at 100 times, I can read that it's a speed limit sign and that it's 55 miles per hour. You've probably heard it in a ton of other videos already, but performance on this thing has just been everything you can realistically ask for in a flagship smartphone in 2023. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with its Adreno 740 GPU paired with 12 gigabytes of RAM on this thing just flies. I don't care what game you play, what you throw at it, heck, even basic video editing on this thing is a breeze. If you run into any issues, it's not from these internals or this OS. Samsung's One UI offers more than you'll find anywhere, period. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it's the best smartphone OS anywhere or even the best Android skin because you might not even need or use all of its features. But for me personally, it's my favorite. I do use a lot of these features and I'd much rather have them all available to me than not. And what I have found from engaging with viewers of this channel and just people in general who have tried Samsung devices is that they all use at least something from One UI that they can't get on an iPhone or a Pixel. Whether it's Dual Messenger, the ability to use two separate installs of the same messaging app, Secure Folder, Edge Panel, Floating Windows, and even things that are available on other Android devices like Split View Multitasking, just isn't as awesome to use as it is on this brilliant, massive 6.8 inch display. Now that size is a bit of a double-edged sword, which brings me to the only thing I dislike about this phone. Yep, my only complaint is how large and unwieldy it is. And some prefer phones this size anyway, so that doesn't even count as a negative to a lot of you. I prefer how the size and shape of the S23 Plus feels in the hand, personally, and I really wish Samsung made two different sizes of its Ultra line, like they did with the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. It was so awesome having a flagship device that size with an S Pen. Speaking of, I am not a heavy user of the S Pen, but having it built into the device just gives you so much more freedom, including being able to use whatever case you want. Unlike with the Z Fold 5, for example, where you have to use one of the S Pen cases if you don't want to carry the S Pen separately. That's great for someone like me that does like to switch cases often and sometimes even go without a case. You get all the Bluetooth functionality you've heard about with this S Pen, unlike the one that comes with the Z Fold 5. But what I use it for the most is taking notes during work meetings. No more having to carry a pen and a notepad. So how's the S23 Ultra been after six months? It's been everything it's advertised to be and more. Is it for you? Well, that depends. For me, the S23 Plus, for example, is really more than enough. Both devices have amazing battery life, though I can go two full days on the S23 Ultra if I set the display to Full HD instead of Quad HD. Whereas I end the day with about 30 to 40% on the plus, which means I need to charge it overnight. If you don't need the extra zoom capabilities and prefer a phone that's just easier to use with one hand, I'd recommend the S23 Plus or even the base S23. The plus has been the best $1,000 flagship you can get and it's honestly not close. But if what you want in your pocket is the very best hardware and software tech the industry has to offer in 2023, from the top display to arguably the best cameras to objectively the most feature-packed hardware and software out there, you're going to be happy with the S23 Ultra for years to come, especially with Samsung offering four years of OS updates and five years of security updates. 
We'll see what the iPhone 15 Pro Max or Ultra, if they really are borrowing from Samsung's naming convention, has in store coming up here soon. And you can be sure I'll compare it to the S23 Ultra, so get subscribed if you don't want to miss that. But unless iOS suddenly adds a ton of new features and the camera system gets a few new tricks, it's going to be really difficult to dethrone the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra as the smartphone king of 2023. If you're interested in an S23 Ultra or S23 Plus, I've got links in the description for where you can pick those up while also supporting the channel. As all the devices you've seen on my channel, I've spent my own hard-earned cash on. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. This video is sponsored by Best No Copyright Music. I'm often asked where it is I get the music that I include in my videos. The answer to that question is Best No Copyright Music. Link to their channel is in the description.